Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and well, we did it! Yes, we passed the double milestone of 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, and 10,000 supporters for my first modular mock on LEGO Ideas, Fast Food Corner. And I couldn't have done it without all of you, so thank you one and all. Now to celebrate this uh, momentous occasion, I had a few ideas for doing something a bit different on the channel, but Mrs Hood, my greatest supporter, suggested doing an interview to mark the occasion. So given it's just audio, get a nice drink, put on your headphones, lean back, close your eyes and enjoy. So, I guess it's quite unusual in that I am the interviewee and you are the interviewer, but it's me introducing you. So uh, welcome to the channel, Mrs Hood. Hello Robin, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you very much. So I always think it's odd when uh, YouTube channels bring their wives onto the show because they always look really uncomfortable, like they don't really want to be there. Uh, and I always call that proof of wife. Uh, but in this case, uh, this interview was actually your idea. It was. Um, obviously, we're spending a lot of time at home um, at the weekend and we just started having a really good chat about your Lego channel and Lego ideas on Friday. And actually, I thought that sounds like a fantastic opportunity for you to share some things with your subscribers and suggested that we video it. Yeah, so here we are. So I guess I'd better hand over control to you. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. So um, it's been an absolutely amazing weekend for your Lego hobby in the fact that you've hit 10,000 subscribers and 10,000 supporters on Lego Ideas within two days of each other. How are you feel feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good, actually. I mean, I don't think I expected either of those things necessarily. 10,000 subscribers would have always been uh, in the crosshairs, I suppose, but you never know that you're going to achieve things and what you find entertaining others are going to enjoy. So I guess that was a hope, but the Lego Ideas was completely uh, left field for me. I didn't uh, ever anticipate even making a submission, let alone one doing well, let alone it reaching the full 10,000 in about a month and a half. So that's been a crazy journey and, and that's been really amazing. I'm really quite proud of that, I must say. Yeah, I mean, I, wanna, I wanted to talk about Fast Food Corner because corner, one of the really interesting things is that you were initially really nervous about even sharing it on your channel. Yes, yeah, that is true. I I started off the whole thing uh, by building with real life bricks as opposed to digitally and, and I used those... Uh, panel pieces that are part of the fast food corner element itself and they're juniors pieces and they're pretty big and they're pretty ugly actually and they're printed and I just thought just the inclusion of those alone would get a lot of uh, negative comments and people wouldn't like that and you know it would be a bit of a non-starter so um, when I actually designed that it was kind of just for personal pleasure really of just designing it uh, and even when I started my channel I didn't anticipate ever either sharing it or even even building it in real life. So the fact that I've bought all the bits now with the encouragement of uh, the channel's success uh, and then submitted it and then it uh, go the full way is <laughs> quite astounding, really. So how come you came to submit it for Lego Ideas? Uh, well, loads. it was just getting to the point where loads of people were, were suggesting I should uh, and sort of not taking no for an answer, really. So I do have to thank a lot of my subscribers and supporters for that because they actually drove me to do it. I mean, it is true that it, it probably has a lower chance of becoming a real life Lego set because Lego haven't historically uh, chosen any modulars because I guess they compete with their own range of modulars, but I don't see why it should be either or, but anyway. Um, so I, I was sort of under the misapprehension that, that they didn't even accept modular submissions, but they definitely do. Um, so again, they might not, they might not pick it just on that basis alone, but then there's a first for everything. So I'm still mm. quite positive. Uh, and I think the support and encouragement that, you know, it's generated being out there and, and just a widespread, uh, positivity means that I think Lego really could make it a set if they wanted to. So fingers crossed. I think, I think the, the really 
lovely thing I I think about Fast Food Corner is the fact that it really has evolved very organically with input from your subscribers, um, from your YouTube channel. So actually, there's a real public demand, I think, for them to make it into a set. Yes, I think it's definitely got a bit more enthusiasm and momentum than some other things just because of that widespread input. I mean, there are lots of examples of that. I was sort of thinking the other day about just a little scene with the knocked over bins at the back and the rat and the way that I do things in Brick Nottingham is that I generally would leave an area like that and the, the pavement out the front completely blank until I'd done the rest of the surrounding area before deciding what I was going to do. But with it being more of a submission, I kind of had to think of those things ahead of time. So, um, you know, and then add to that all the little uh, uh, suggestions that made all the difference, really, throughout the entire process. Because I've, I'm a firm believer in that nobody's got the monopoly on good ideas. And, you know, my, my whole channel is evidence of that. So, very good. Yeah. <laughs> I do love the fact you've now got your uh, Robin Hood catchphrases that you don't necessarily use in normal life. <laughs> good, well, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do have. I do say several words far too frequently. It, it appears, but uh, I, I do get called on it. So I was going to say, thing. I love the fact that you always get called on it. So, um, next plans for Lego Ideas. Has this encouraged you to, to submit anything else? Yeah, I think it has actually. Um, it, as I said before, it's, it was never really on my radar as something that was worth doing. And I do think there's so much talent on display there that sometimes you underestimate your own ability and you think um, what I would have to offer wouldn't, you know, cut the mustard, so to speak. Um, but now I do have uh, quite a firm idea for a second one, actually. I was definitely going to wait uh, for this one to make it rather than have two overlapping or anything. Um, but I think I will uh, develop that. Uh, a bit further it's not ready to go or anything and maybe I'll leave it a couple of months so people will get a bit of respite from me um, beckoning them onto my submission page um, but yeah I, th I think it's something that will be very different from Fast Food Corner not another modular uh, but it could be just as popular and that's not to say I won't do another modular of course in due course but um, uh, they do take a lot of time to develop to get to, to that sort of level of um, complexity and you know mm. interest and I think as well you know like you said fast food corner actually was really improved with sharing it with um you know the community mm. and it, I mean I'm I'm not um I haven't spent much time looking on lego ideas only recently with yours but it seems that yours is reasonably unusual in the fact that it is built rather than designed just on um on lego cad so you know with that alone it's going to take quite a while to sort of develop a new modular idea and get it to the stage that fast food corner was at yes yes and um i suppose most people do it on lego cad as you describe it because um that's easier to do it digitally than um than than manually um but i always wanted to do it manually because i yeah. kind of think that's the point really that's the point of lego it's not what if with loads of different color pieces that don't really exist it's it's let's do it so um yeah, I, I, I think it definitely is unusual uh, and hopefully that gives it a bit of, um, you know, uh, extra added support. But um, the next one I will probably do in real life as well as uh, on CAD because most of the best CAD pictures come from um, Studio or, or other programs that I don't actually use, mm. which produce much better rendered images. And I'm just useless at using that partially because I'm so ingrained in using uh, Lego's digital designer, which is... Uh, not supported anymore unfortunately mm. um i mean do you think you are going to move on to different software or are you going to stick with digital designer until it falls over well there's no reason it'd fall over i suppose they've stopped loading new parts onto it which is limiting but only to a little extent to be honest uh, and to be honest studio's got the same problem anyway it's got other parts missing mm. but it's just the speed the speed i work on ldd might be surprising to some people and in the opposite direction it might be surprising how slow and awful and cumbersome I find studio I just cannot get on with it <laughs> <laughs> so um just wanted to have a talk about Brick Nottingham um 
So as far as I'm aware, all of this started with you buying that white train as a present to yourself. Um, did you always secretly want to build a Lego city? Well, that's a good question. So it's partially yes, partially no. So when I bought the white train, 60051, <laughs> uh, they, yeah, I have to do that. Uh, they, um, it wasn't my intention to that that would be step one of, you know, 3,000 steps towards Brick Nottingham. So you weren't just sort of trying to gently hoodwink me. <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't actually. I genuinely wasn't. But um, that did become a train well a train with a station a train with a station and a siding a train with a station a siding and a cargo area and so on and that's probably the story that ever every uh Afol could tell you um but i think from playing with lego as a child all the way through i've always thought that having a full-blown lego city would be an excellent idea so in a way yes but i didn't i didn't sort of link those two parts of my uh, character together, I suppose. Uh, but I always thought a good Lego city, one with full pavements and street furniture and loads of buildings, and as opposed to just a few sets sort of stuck next to each other, was always a fine aspiration to have with transport mm. systems linking it all together. But um, yeah, it's just a very slippy slope. So yeah, a warning to anyone listening, you know, one Lego train really can become a bit of a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm testament to that. <laughs> so, so um, you know, obviously you'd had a couple of goes at building smaller cities um, before Brick Nottingham. Um, what made you decide to leap into having the YouTube channel? Well, I think you start off with a smaller city, which by comparison is absolutely tiny to what I'm doing now. Um in order to sort of test things out, in a way, it's sort of just to just display it all, really, isn't it? But then you get better ideas and and decide to take things to the next level. And I think the the main idea in Brick Nottingham to anything that I'd done before was actually trying to emulate those old Lego City brochures you used to get, where they'd have all the sets sort of out in one sort of double page spread, and it would show them, you know, the whole current range. And it was all built into one cohesive mass. And one thing I really liked about those was all the different levels that everything was on. And that was partially so they could display all the sets uh, together on one double spread. But they had things like boats in the water and the water level being below the street level. So the boat wouldn't be towering above the street level. And it just seemed so obvious to me that that's what you needed to do. Because otherwise the ship would be taller than most buildings, which although it can happen that way, you know, they would start off lower down as well. So that's the main thing I wanted to do. And when I realised that to do this, I was going to have to put a lot of effort in. You couldn't do this half-hearted. Um, and that's when I said to you, you know, I could probably make this into a channel, this development, if I wanted to, because I was watching the channels that probably everyone else watches uh, in addition to mine. Um, and, you know, I thought, yeah, I can do that. So why not give it a go? And um, I'm really glad I did. Mm. I mean, I, I, I know you get an awful lot of satisfaction out of your channel, um, but you, you do have a job as well outside of Lego. Um, is doing the channel harder than you thought it would be? What, what's been the thing that's sort of most surprised you about the reality of having a channel? Uh, I th it's unquestionably the time it takes. It is an absolute commitment of time. Um, you know, on top of it, like you say, a full-time job, you've got to do prep for each of these videos. I mean, to make, a, say, a 30-minute video, you probably need an hour's worth of recorded footage. And from that, you probably will be filming for, say, two hours. But that's when you've got everything brought together in one place. It's all just uh, at arm's reach sort of thing. You've got to move the lighting, all the rest of it. And then you've got to source those pieces You've also got to have the idea of what you're going to do. And if it's a mock, you've got to already have designed it and know exactly what you're going to do. Um, so it can take absolutely hours just to put together the background for one video. Uh, brick halls are a bit easier because they're a bit more spontaneous, uh, just opening a package, which, I'm, which is why I don't mind doing one of those a week on, in addition to two videos. But two videos and then answering all the comments, which I try and do, which I'm going to have to stop soon because it's getting too time consuming because as the channel grows 
but um, answering all comments takes hours as well. So by the time I've done the buying of the pieces, cleaning of the pieces, sorting of the pieces, planning them, and then actually starting the videos, yeah, it's it's an absolutely huge amount of time, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much all encompassing to be honest. Yeah, because I I know the original intention was to try and sort of build a buffer of, of videos so you maybe had sort of two or three weeks as as you know as a buffer but actually the the way that your channel works in terms of incorporating people's feedback it, it actually seems that that's become quite difficult to do and you know you, yeah. you pretty much are just in time with your with your videos as you create them yeah i mean there's there's a benefit to just in time in that um You've, you've got all the up-to-date suggestions and things that you can reflect on and, and reflect in your next video as if you were recording them two weeks in advance. Obviously, you couldn't do that at all. So there's that benefit. Um, but I think once you're at the position right now, like I am with Just In Time, you 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 don't you don't have the ability to get two weeks ahead because it, it represents too much work to, to get that buffer in place anyway. Well, so I mean, I, I would just like to share with your subscribers the fact that when we go on holiday you work incredibly hard to try and make sure that there is a buffer so you can continue to release when we are away yeah yeah that's and that's that's pretty much kills me actually to be honest <laughs> um, but yeah there's been many a time where i'm actually uploading it uh, to uh, youtube you know just before going to bed for it to be released in the morning so uh, that is a very common occurrence yeah well like this this is being done the, the day before release um so what have you designed that you're most proud of, other than Fast Food Corner? No, oh, I was going to say Fast Food Corner. Um, what have I designed that I'm most proud of? I really like the castle. I suppose that isn't the most innovative, but I'm really proud of it because I never owned any of those sets back in the day, and I've sort of bought all the old pieces and um, sort of concocted them all together. So I'm pretty proud of that one. But I think I'm, I'm also really proud of like my marina, it's really simple, but that sort of 3D element that I was sort of describing earlier, you know, that I hadn't seen that done on anyone else's channel or anything on Google or, or anything at all, really. So to sort of come up with the idea of making it 3D and using proper base plates that I haven't cut or anything like that in a different combination and then having it on three separate levels um, so the boats can be below uh you know street level and so on i think i think that was a moment when i sort of stood back with hands on hips <laughs> sort of nodding <laughs> to myself so uh yeah I'd, I'd probably say it's got to be something to do with all the levels yeah i, I mean i i really like your train station actually i think the fact that yeah, it, it takes inspiration from so many other sets but is very sympathetic but also sort of different i i really like although it does have the um the worst lavender bricks in the in the colour scheme. Yeah, yeah, the news. Well, if there was a different news tile, I could use that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Makes it stand out. It's probably quite realistic, actually. Yeah. A lot of these chains have foul colours. Um, what's been the most difficult thing to do or build in Brick Nottingham? Um, most difficult? Well, the facades are very difficult because they're so far away. To get that depth... I've really tried to make those tables up to the wall because, well, let, let me rewind. To make my room, where which is the only space that I'm allowed to put Lego in, <laughs> uh, as effective as possible, I'm building up to all the walls on all the sides. I'm not having any space to walk around the outside. So as a result, I've tried to make those tables as deep as possible in order to get in as much as possible. So to reach right at the back is an absolute stretch and can only be done for short periods of time. It's that uh, far away. So they're difficult. But I think the worst nightmare I had was probably with the subway. When I did the last set of tables, I had to uh, basically extend the track. And I'll be doing that again soon, actually, when I add yet more tables. Uh, and when I did that, they all came apart from each other, right buried deep underneath uh, Brick Nottingham Castle. Uh, and it's oh, to say I can only just get my arm in is an understatement. So basically, I was trying to fish out bits of train track uh, at fingertip length, and then afterwards trying to rejoin them together at fingertip length. And I lost quite a bit of skin on my arms that day. So <laughs> I've, I've I've done it so that shouldn't ever happen again. But I I uh, stress the word shouldn't. <laughs> I must admit the thing that I am most anxious about in your 
Brick Nottingham is the fact that some of the tables are propped up on drink cans. Yes. And we recently found out that these can corrode and and leak. So uh, from a from a carpet point of view, I am pretty terrified that you're going to have um, a can incident that's right at the back of a table. I think I can reach all the cans because the, by definition, all the tables held up by cans are held up a good sort of six, seven, mm. well, six inches. So I can definitely get my arm into those spaces. So I, I hope that won't be a problem. And it, it, we'll have to notice it happening, of course, and then, and then you can do a direct swap. But they are quite convenient props. Maybe I should get some wooden ones. Yeah, we'll have to look. Um, so now that you're well into the Brick Nottingham build, is there anything you don't like or any design or layout ideas that you committed to but really irk you? Oh, that's a good one. Um, let me think. Well, I mean, I, I often get questioned about adding more trains and adding train sidings and things like that. And, and there is part of me that would love to have a huge train yard uh, and a huge uh, diversity of trains running around. But they're so hard to get a dedicated um, sort of built up city around because of the curves and especially a large uh, train yard. You just can't do it. And if you actually add up all of the rail pieces together to sort of count them on one of those loops, it's probably equivalent to about 10 or 12 base plates. So for each of those loops, you're losing the equivalent of a huge line of modulars. So if you're to add a third or add a large train yard, then you'd lose yet more built up space. And that's what I'm going for, a cross section of a very built up city. So I'm, I'm always annoyed that I can't fit more trains in, but I think it is a balance that's right. And I've tried to mitigate that as much as I can by having the subway. So that's really mm -hmm. fun. So that's another train, but it's just out of mostly sight. And um, by making my trains as absolutely stupidly long as possible, because I couldn't have a park one of those in a siding anyway. No. So you really each one counts as two, because if you park that in a siding, it'd actually be longer than the whole uh, length of, of one of the sides. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to trying to do the best I can. But, uh, yeah, it would be great if I could have eight different train lines with eight different trains running around. Mm. I suppose logistics wise as well, because, um, you know, you designed all of your standing holes and layout pretty much on on paper mm. um given the fact that you have the reality of having to move lights and pieces of kit around oh, yeah. is, would you would you do that differently because i know you did it to maximize build space well that's it i mean moving all the lights around and knocking everything over is an absolute nightmare each time i do a video and it's only going to get worse because at the moment at least i've got the whole far end of the lego room unbuilt up at the moment so i don't know how it's going to work when i've filled it to be honest uh, I might have to have worse lighting, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but but it's either that or I'm going to lose a huge band of city mm. in order to sort of have a, a completely open side. So I do think it's the right choice. I mean, if I had a sort of American-style huge basement, obviously that would be the the best solution. So I could walk all the way around it. But That's the problem we, with living in the UK. Yeah, we just don't have that space in the UK. So you suffer for your for your subscribers. My knees certainly suffer. My back suffers as well for my subscribers. Yes. <laughs> What's the best thing that you have designed and is completely hidden from view? <laughs> so Mrs. Hood always <laughs> uh, finds it very funny when I do something with immense detail, um, possibly immense time, and then I put the roof back on the building, and you absolutely can't see a jot of it from the outside. So um, I. I really like my casino, which is on the top floor of my uh, Grand Emporium and mm -hmm. Casino building, uh, which is in a sort of an additional floor. And that's fantastic. I'll definitely check out that video if you haven't already. Um, and I, that, that really makes me smile each time I see it. But even better than that, I think, is my uh, collection of Ultra Agent villains, which I have all sat around the boardroom table, which I've had to extend in the top of the uh, town hall modular. And um, they've sort of kicked the mayor out uh, and they're using the boardroom. And, um, yeah, you can't see a single bit of that from the outside. So you'd have to lift the <laughs> lid off to peer inside. And it's not even that near the edge. So it's not that easy to look at at all. And you've got um, a sort of villain thing in one of your warehouses, haven't you? Oh, yeah. the Yeah, that's Dr. Inferno's mech that factory, yeah. Yeah, so that you, I mean, at least that's near the edge, so it's quite easy to lift the roof off that one. 
Um, but it's very hard to see all the detail really without leaning right over it. So yeah, it's an, it's another one that's got a very sort of bland building with absolutely tons on the inside. Yeah, you just um, well, you do like your detail, which makes Lego your Lego city so special. I think. Um, what is the most authentically Nottingham thing in your city? Okay, so I've tried to base a few things on real life Nottingham and um, some of them don't really actually look very much like the real thing. But I think one that does is the tram network, mm -hmm. even though our one is kind of a dark green uh, and the one in Brick Nottingham is orange, of course. Um, but the area where the elevated tram line on my monorail system goes over uh, Brick Nottingham station is absolutely identical to real life Nottingham. The tram does seemingly fly over perpendicular to the uh, train tracks. And, mm -hmm. it, and it is, I mean, when I saw it, when I was at the station last, I actually videoed it for the last tram video I did, and it is literally the same. So <laughs> that, that's a really good uh, good link. I must admit, I wish we had um, a beach, a proper beach. Yes. Um, that that would be that would be good. Yeah, we're quite far from the coast here. We are, <laughs> although um, we do create the beach in Market Square in the summer. Yeah, they do dump um, a ton of sand on on our normal Market Square just to make a fake beach for people. <laughs> Not quite as good as yours though. Um, what is your favourite original Lego set in your city? Ooh. There's so many. I mean, as a category, I really like all of the city sort of town square type sets like 60097, <laughs> uh, which is when the tram came in, just because they got loads of different buildings. Uh, and I like anything that has more than one building. There was the, the uh, city capital set. I'm going to do it again, 60200. Oh my God, do you know all of these off by heart? <laughs> I know quite a few of them. Um, because they've got lots of buildings in them. And yeah, we get loads of vehicles, but I don't ever think we get enough buildings so i really like those but that's not my answer my answer is the el dorado fortress because that is a set that i never had as a child that i desperately wanted and never got even close to getting so when i uh actually bought one second hand on ebay when i was unwrapping it i was genuinely quite excited so that's probably yeah my my favorite okay so that sort of does link in with my next question mm -hmm. which is is there an original Lego set that you don't have but really want to get? Hmm, that's even harder. I mean, there are loads of trains that I wouldn't mind getting, but I've kind of painted myself in a corner with those because uh, I've made all my tunnels and bridges and everything so tight uh, to the dimensions of my existing trains that definitely anything eight wide or any elements on them that are eight wide, I can't accommodate. So I can't get a great big hulking steam train or something like that. Um, uh, and I suppose I'd also like kind of more uh, things like the Ultra Agents, sort of baddie sets and things like that. But I just don't have space for them. I'd like to get more um, container ships and things like that, but I just don't have space for it. So it's a real, it's a real balancing act, I suppose. But um, as far as sort of classic set goes, uh, I think I'm... Uh, um, uh, I've got all the ones that are most fundamental to me. Well, that's a lovely position to be in. Lucky you. Um, what are your favourite Lego channels and who do you take inspiration from? Well, I think I started off probably like virtually everyone uh, watching Jang on Jang Bricks. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's a real inspiration because he's done a very large city and he definitely does it his way and the way he wants to do it and uh, all the rest of it. So um, that was the one that I watched when I only watched one for, for very many months. Uh, so that's probably um, the main one. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure they've all been a minor influence on me, but I don't I don't think that I was sort of necessarily following the mould of any of them in mm -hmm. particular. I mean, the good thing about him and, say, Alex Nunes, for example, is that they all do their own thing and their own style. And I've definitely done that as well with Brit Nottingham. And I'm building things the way I want to. A lot of people go for realism and they'll build, um, you know, buildings that are sort of right 
to scale and have several floors and definitely have toilets, full stairs, full fencing and everything. Mm. Whereas I like to build in a kind of Lego city style because my style is to do those those double page spreads from the old um, brochures. I want to have it looking like it's loads of Lego sets kind of glued together um, seamlessly uh, with a sort of unbroken, um, you know, blend between them and, and loads of funny scenes. And that's something as well that I think is a bit underdone in the Lego community, having, it doesn't have to be adult humour, but just sort of sensible humour, things that probably Lego themselves wouldn't do. Just having, you know, people uh, being attacked by a seagull, for example, just adds so much colour to Brick Nottingham. Mm. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I must admit, actually, because I, I, I sometimes find it... Um a little bit overwhelming to go into your lego room because there's just so much stuff in there but actually i mean you could spend hours looking at all the different scenes that you've got i mean you must have hundreds of minifigs yes now. and that's why i try and buy them cheaply whenever i can because just to get a crowd you know in a small area you need 30 minifigures yeah. and it's just it's just hard to do and afford so yeah. <laughs> you know do what you can and I, you know i i love the way that you are actually constantly looking out for you know bargains yeah you because know, it is it's it is an investment to do this as a hobby but you you always try and make sure that you're doing it you know best price and you work yes. very hard on that and you're I mean, sourcing your it's, stuff it's an expensive hobby at mm -hmm. the end of the day and saving money wherever you can is uh, of paramount importance i mean I, you do see some channels spending thousands of pounds on old Lego sets, and that's great. And if you can do that, then power to you. But um, I'm I'm a great fan of getting a set with parts missing, or with uh, you know stickers misplaced, or something that isn't attractive to somebody else for an absolute bargain, uh, and then filling in the gaps and fixing it myself. So I I get quite a lot of pleasure out of doing things like that, and and also making do with official Lego parts rather than buying third party printed parts or, or third-party uh, 3D printed parts, so actual bricks, um, because, I mean, they cost a fortune and it's a pretty slippery slope if you start down that route, I think. Mm. So um, nearing the end now, um, what is coming up that you are most looking forward to in terms of Brick Nottingham? Well, on the longer term, it's got to be my fully motorised fairground, mm. which is going to basically take up the far... Uh, the whole middle of the, the far side. So it will be about four base plates deep and about, oh, I don't know, let's say 10 wide. So that will be massive. And it's going to be a real um, <laughs> minefield because it's going to have all the wires and the workings, hopefully all hidden, because I don't like having a fairground with loads of wires and battery boxes all on display. Um, but that's probably going to be a while off, unfortunately, because it's just, you, you need to kind of have other things around it to know what you're, what your limitations are, the, the area you're working with and so on. So it has to be kind of a bit of organic growth. So I think in the short term, I'm looking forward to doing some kind of medium sized buildings somewhere in between a modular size uh, and, uh, you know, some of my smaller shops, kind of like a 16 by 32 type footprint. Uh, and I want to have a whole row of buildings kind of across the road from the front of the station. Mm -hmm. Um, sort of enclosing that whole area and sort of being the edge of that second standing hole. So I'm hoping to do a hospital and a few other buildings uh, like that. So I think there'll be a good compromise between, uh, you know, full-blown modular, which I do intend to do a few more of, and I'm actually saving a few spaces for. But um, And then there's also the airport that I want to do, so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. And the cargo area for the trains, that'll be good. Um, so there's just so much to do. And I know that some people are impatient for certain things, and I get that, but there's so many competing, uh, uh, you know, directions that we can go in that I kind of want to do them all, but, you know, it's one at a time. <laughs> and I suppose in terms of space, you are, what, just over halfway full in your space now? I think I'm over halfway on footprint, but I think there's quite a few spaces within the half I've done. So I think if it's 60% covered, it's still only 50% full. So I think I'm about halfway, yes. Yeah. And I've still got a heck of a lot of planes to hang from my ceilings as well, which I'm going to be hitting with my camera lights as well, no doubt. Yeah, I think yeah that that's another one of your 
small obsessions that we haven't mentioned, you know, the, the number of planes that have arrived to be suspended from the ceiling. Yeah, well, sometimes you just have to buy them when they're that cheap. So, <laughs> you know, guilty, guilty. <laughs> So I suppose final question, um, is there anything that you would like to say to your supporters um, just to wrap it up? Uh, wow, thank you. That's a good opportunity. Uh, yeah, well, thank you all uh, 10,000 of you who clicked support on my Lego ideas. That's going to be fantastic. I'll keep you up to date with the progress with Lego. I've no idea what happens. I hope I get a badge or some sort of certificate. <laughs> I really like that, I must say. Uh, and that would be on behalf of all of us to a degree, so that would be fantastic. I want to say thank you to all my subscribers and the people who comment and give me wonderful suggestions uh, to make Brick Nottingham the wonderful diversity it is. I think your suggestions do genuinely make it a lot better. I um, also want to give a shout out to my Patreons. There aren't many of them. You can support me via Patreon. Um, you get absolutely nothing for doing this. I don't do any content that's specifically for Patreons because I want everyone to have access to everything I do. But um, that makes them all the more generous for, for basically giving me a contribution towards all these bricks I have to buy, all these tiles to tile all these pavements uh, for absolutely no personal gain. Uh, and you can get a uh, patented hot tea technique mug from my merch link. And now I'm 10,000 subscribers. I can actually uh, get a... Uh, merch tab on my YouTube channel, I think. And you can also get a uh, Vitruvian Robin t-shirt on that as well. So check that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, thank you as well to Mrs. Hood for allowing uh, me and us the spare bedroom, because that is our spare bedroom, yeah. our guest bedroom, uh, the the space for uh, Brick Nottingham. I do, I, I do want to be really clear that there is no more space. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've made that clear to everyone. No more space, guys, sorry. Uh, we're, we are limited to that room, but we are going to fill it absolutely jam-packed with as many bricks as possible. And when the tables are finished, we'll start on the floor. <laughs> hey! Fabulous. Well, uh, Robin Hood, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for listening. You'll have to let me know uh, how that was for you. If you enjoyed the interview, we could do more in the future, technically. I thought it went quite well. Uh, the audio is a bit difficult because we were actually sharing a mic, but uh, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. So do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. Uh, but until next time, see you! <laughs>